The largest Iranian naval vessel named Karg sank in the Gulf of Oman after reports to douse a f- after efforts to douse a fire failed. It's said that rough seas make strong sailors, but most of the time they seem to swallow every captain and every ship that comes in their way. Across all oceans, all seas carry a wreckage or two of the vessels that once gracefully sailed on them, and every time we're left to ask ourselves what went down. So join us as we navigate through 20 sinking ships caught on camera. Number 20, Hansa Constitution. Imagine you're riding high on adrenaline while cheering for your favorite football team, and the game gets interrupted by a ship. The residents of Pak Fu Lam were about to witness a similar snafu when a German container ship, Hansa, almost collided with the shore wall, which is adjacent to the Stanley Ho Sports Center's football field. The residents witnessed in awe and confusion when the container was headed toward the wall at a steady speed and no one to stop it. Thankfully, the captain's quick thinking had slowed down the impending collision, but by every angle, the 633-foot vessel seemed to be sinking. And gosh, the gushing monsoon winds were strong enough to steer the ship off its course. To add fuel to the fire, the engine failed, and it seemed like the shore was going to become a wreckage site real soon. What really saved the container from drowning was the masterful skills of the captain and an ounce of luck from the gods of the sea themselves. Truly a miracle on the shore. Number 19, Russian Cargo Ship. Remember kids, don't drive after having a fun night out in a bar and definitely don't try to steer a cargo vessel. It seems like even the ocean needs DUI warning signs after a Russian cargo ship slammed into the Gwangan Bridge in Busan, South Korea. And let's just say the captain had way too much fun the previous night. The ship was on its way home after offloading 1,495 tons of iron pipes while it had 1,415 tons of steel coil on board. Yep, pretty sure that clash was thunderous as the lower part of the bridge simply crumbled away. You know when you break a cookie in half and it just pulls apart? That's what happened to the bridge, but of course, there was no sweet treat for the captain. He was investigated thoroughly and tested for alcohol. Plus, what really bothered the authorities was that the ship was never supposed to be steered toward the bridge. The vessel was off to Russia, and it had been sailing in the opposite direction. The encounter was massive, and the ship tipped hard. It was quietly likely that it would have sunk if it wasn't for some pixie dust of luck. Number 18. Sandpiper You're about to give arriving in the nick of time a whole different meaning starting now. The pleasure craft Sandpiper had sent a mayday call to the U.S. Coastal Guards when their boat was stranded in rough waters. The waves emerging far into the vastness of the sea were as high as a four-story apartment building, and the captain knew his waterborne abode stood no chance against the monstrosity of the sea. But Sandpiper made its own luck when a USCG mission was doing drills nearby. Upon hearing the call, the rescuer swimmer was a split second away from the captain when the wave caught the best of them. The gush of water capsized the sandpiper in a split second, and it was rolled multiple times in the harsh water, and the floundering of the ship is one visual that'll haunt us forever. Thankfully, the rescuer didn't budge and took hold of the captain. He kept paddling even though the current was too strong and got the man to safety. Talk about fighting the waters. Number 17, Jin Tian. Well, the next story is as old as the sea itself. Not everyone who sails on it reaches their destination, and it would seem the same fate met the Jin Tian, which now resides beneath the water. The ship had sent the authorities a mayday call around the west of Django Islands, the remote islands in southwestern Japan where humans don't ever step in. Yet the vessel was carrying a crew of 22 people, out of which only five were rescued alive in freezing cold weather. As the crew kept sending distress signals, the ship was readily going underwater. By the time they received help, there was no sign of a vessel floating on the waters, just some remains of lifeboats. Both Japan and South Korea joined their efforts for the rescue mission, but neither luck nor weather was on their side. As time passed, the operation wasn't just about rescuing the crew members, it was about bringing their bodies home. The hunch was that they would have lost their lives due to hypothermia, as the sea was almost icy. While the lifeguards were able to retrieve eight bodies, nine were still seabound. Number 16. OS-35 
When the demise of a ship becomes a public show, it's a deeply harrowing feeling. The bulk carrier OS-35 was slowly sinking at the port of Gibraltar, and no one could do anything about it. While on its way, the vessel hit an anchored LNG carrier and couldn't move beyond Catalan Bay. The authorities could see that the carrier's bow was sinking into the seabed, but its stem remained intact. All of the crew members were rescued in a timely manner, but the vessel itself looked quite irredeemable. As the inner structure of the ship deteriorated under harsh waters, the ship was fractured beyond repair. Soon enough, the stem of the ship started lowering down into the water as well. And that's when the authorities in Gibraltar pulled up their socks and tried to salvage everything that remained. Yet it was too late. The weather was too harsh for the boat to remain afloat, so the authorities gave the last helping hand to the OS-35 and sank it themselves. Later on, authorities began a new plan to salvage whatever remained of the ship, from little pieces of cargo to scraps of metal that were once a mighty carrier. Number 15. MV Stellar Banner a very large ore carrier, or the VLOC of the Marshall Islands, was on its way to China in February of 2020, when it met a fate similar to the Titanic. On board, the ship was managing the weight of 295,000 metric tons of iron ore when a simple mistake from the master steered it off the coast. He ditched the original course for the ship to embark on an alternative unplanned route to cut through the sandbar. Yep, if there's a handbook on how to sink your ship in seconds, Pretty sure this terrible decision-making would make it as the pro tip. As the ship stumbled, the water poured in from all nooks and corners. The crew desperately tried to control water ingress through built-in and portable pipes, but all efforts went in vain. Their human speed was no match to the unforgiving harsh water, and soon the ship fractured. The water poured into the ship at unprecedented speed, and the master called for the final mayday. He moved the vessel to shallow waters, but that was just like putting a band-aid on a gunshot wound. Though investigation showed that the ship was beyond repair and it had to be scuttled. Its final moments were caught on camera and needless to say, it's a relief that no one was on board. A million dollar investment right into the deepest pits of water, just like that. Number 14, Yang Zing 56. If there's anything more unforgiving than the gushing hard waves in the sea, it's the ice sheets that never seem to melt. And we've learned some hard-hitting lessons from Titanic. When you hear ice and coast in the same sentence, it's time to steer away. But as the sinking of the mighty ship tells us, sometimes it's just too late. And China's Yongzing 56 would know a thing or two about it as well. The vessel was carrying aluminum when it was caught in the ice sheets in the Strait of Tartari around the Venino port in Russia. After every effort to control the fractures in the ship didn't yield any effort, the captain gave the SOS call to the authorities. Yet the crew could feel the ship sinking, and that's when they made a harrowing decision that'll put your heart in your mouth. When the crew saw a Russian ferry passing by, they knew this was their only chance for survival until help arrived. So they walked on the ice sheets to get to the ferry, and thankfully they were safe. The ship? Not so much. The water ingress into the vessel was uncontrollable, so all of the pumping attempts had to be halted. A few days later, the sinking of the ship would be caught on camera. Number 13. Voici Bernadette Here's the thing, Voici Bernadette wasn't the noblest vessel on the deck, and its scuttling speaks of sweet, sweet justice. The 180-foot-long cargo freighter slipped under the waves in the southeast of Port Fierce Inlet in St. Lucie County. Now, the county had received the ship as a gift from the U.S. Customs and Border Agency in Miami for a not-so-typical purpose. Well, the gesture is most certainly grand, because who wouldn't like a boat for their birthday? But Voici Bernadette was already sinking, and it was best to use it as an artificial reef. You heard that right, the unretrieved shipwrecks make a safe haven for corny reefs and the marine life that lives within them. Ships like Voici that aren't eligible to sail have become the most common artificial reef, and this particular scuttling has a backstory. You see, the customs agency didn't just get their hands on the ship while patrolling. This vessel has a long, long history of exporting drugs within the United States. And when it was finally confiscated, it had to be used for good measure. Nothing says good Samaritan than protecting the environment. Number 12. Iranian Cargo Ship Ah well, what's the most rookie mistake a sailor can make? 
look no further than this small-scale cargo ship operating under the Iranian flag. And its crime? While it was crushing under its own weight until it couldn't anymore. The vessel was loaded with heavy cargo that went beyond its maximum capacity, and by the looks of it, the captain was saving himself another trip when he approved the onboarding of cargo weight that was against the rules and the ship's own capacity. Not to mention the vessel already was shabby and too vulnerable for disproportionate distribution of weight. So yeah, the ship was already dying, it just needed the final push that the captain quite happily facilitated. In its last days as a vessel, or well, somewhat of a vessel, it gave a public show that the locals recorded on their cameras. Number 11. El Faro The clock is ticking, can I please speak with a qualified individual? Those were one of the last words of El Faro's captain, Michael Davidson, before he and his crew went deep underwater. The sinking of the El Faro is not too different from the plethora of 911 calls that the operator refuses to take seriously. When Davidson found that his U.S. flagged cargo ship had run its sail after steaming into the eye wall of a Hurricane Joaquin, he sent multiple distress calls. From the onshore company to the ship's security alert system, he was met with the hold ons, we need more information, and then eventually no help. What really unsettled the captain was that the maritime company, Tote, didn't pick up his call at all. The retrieved ship communication shows that in El Faro's last moments, the flooding was beyond control. That's when Davidson ordered his crew to abandon the ship in their rafts. He was also heard helping one of his crew before all the radio lines went off. On October 1st, El Faro went deep into the ocean. By the time authorities got there, the entire 33-person crew was lost in the deepest pits of the sea, never to be recovered. Number 10. USS Radford The USS Radford had served the country's water for the longest time, and today it's still fulfilling its duty by protecting the marine life around the Indian River Inlet. When the US Navy had to decommission its loyal wartime destroyer, an interstate effort decided its eternal fate. The vessel ran its course in 2003 and five years later, it was made available for reefing purposes. Turns out, decommissioned or not, the ship had a lot of prospects. In a joint effort, Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware decided to make use of the ship to protect marine life and boost the diving prospects in the ocean. The American Marine Group spent 14 months preparing the vessel for its one-ticket journey to the Atlantic, and what's a better way to see off a warship than making it useful till its very end? In an effort to make the biggest artificial reef in the ocean, the ship was scuttled by the Cape May Loose Ferry MV Delaware. Its former crew made their farewell, and the ship sank. Seems like a fitting end for a very loyal soldier. What do you think? Number 9. MV Oceanos Faulty waste disposal system, loose hull plates, non-operational valves, and a hole in the watertight bulkhead, by all measures, MV Oceanos shouldn't have been sailing. But call it extreme greed by the Greek company or overconfidence in the vessel's better days, the official decision was made. And let's just say, this is exactly how the series of unfortunate events began. In 1991, the Oceanos left the port in East London for South Africa, and soon enough, passengers started to hear explosions. And nope, those weren't the sounds of jolly fireworks. The crew was instantly alerted because a noticeable tip in the ship's sail and explosions meant only one thing. The engine was gone just like that. People on the deck went about their day, oblivious to the fact that water is filling the lower part of the ship at a steady speed. Remember that 10 centimeter hole in the bulkhead? Yep, that became a gateway for the seawater to flood the ship. And then something horrifying happened. Remember that faulty waste disposal system? That made matters worse too. All of the showers and toilets burst into millions as the water lines got infused with seawater. But the troubles were far from water. When the crew knew that there was no saving grace on the ship, they took most of the lifeboats and fled. The captain followed suit. It was only the bravery of the entertainment crew that a mayday call was made, and eventually all passengers and crew survived. Not before they witnessed the mighty ship getting swallowed by the sea. Number 8. MV Twin Capes Ah yes, another decommissioned ship, another artificial reef. Honestly, at this point, the state of Delaware in the United States is championing the artificial reefing system. 
After hosting the mighty USS Radford, it began more robust scouting for potential ships, and twin capes came in handy. In the 1990s, the ferry went through major upgrades that would be sights to behold for recreational divers. Its lounges, four decks, shark fin smokestacks, and a new pilot abode would make a perfect fish habitat. Not to mention its 70-foot stem would make way for sharks, tunas, and barracudas. Its scuttling would be caught on camera. While it is sad for a landmark ship to get forever waterborne, it's for the good. Sure, by the looks of it, the ferry also looks picture perfect, but we gotta trust the experts here, there was no saving for the twin capes. But hey, the ferry had made thousands of trips between Cape Henlopen in Delaware and Cape May in New Jersey. Yep, that's where it gets its name from. So it was only fitting that the vessel finds its permanent home in the area that's basically its home. All of that while preserving the environment. Number 7. USS Leftwich if you're looking for a ship that's the epitome of endurance, it's time to onboard the USS Leftwich. As the post-World War II Spruance-class destroyer, the warship was meant to survive and thrive, and oh boy, it did put its money where its mouth was. Sailing through the Gulf Coast, the vessel sailed through not one but two monstrous hurricanes. Even in the aftermath of Hurricanes David and Frederick, the ship made the fastest transit ever to reach its destination, the Gulf of Mexico. Then the ship was decked for clearances and shakedown training. And you best believe the vessel made its comeback, only this time it was installed with NATO's highly sophisticated Sea Sparrow and Harpoon missile systems. Soon enough it collided with the submarine USS Edison and sustained major damages on its hull and sonar, but Leftwich wasn't the one to back down. She really said, not today sir, when the US Army used Leftwich for firing missiles and anti-submarine duties in Operation Nimble Archer and Desert Shield. Only then was it decommissioned in 1998. But you can't leave strategic warships out in the open docks, not when your enemies are watching, even from the depths of the sea. This is why USS Leftwich was scuttled in the Pacific Ocean in 2003. Number 6. MV Derbyshire A ship twice the size of the Titanic left Quebec, Canada on July 11, 1980. And then for the decade to come, it was lost in the sea, swallowing all 44 lives on board. The only proof of its existence was a lifeboat that was never used. In the mystery of the largest British ship ever to never steer home, the contesting theories of its drowning are as confusing as its disappearance. You know the gist of it. After a disaster hits, the shipping company instantly denies responsibility, even if its own designs deem the vessel faulty and ineligible to sail. Its maker, Swan Hunter, doesn't believe in conspiracy theories, apparently. Another theory suggests that the ship was hit by a rogue wave long enough to cap the monstrously sized ship. What we do know is that whatever happened on the ship, it was quick and merciless. No one from the crew got even a split second to pick up the phone and make a mayday call. They were all gone into the darkness of the ocean. Number 5. Pura Vida Princess you know it's terrifying when the crew and passengers film what could have been their last moments on the ship. In Costa Rica's Pura Vida Princess, a vacation for 99 passengers went horribly wrong when the ship had to send a distress call early into its voyage. That's one way to cut your vacancy time short, and the shipping company is to blame. The gusting winds in the area were pretty strong. Most weather advisories had asked the vessels to stay put and not go out in the vastness of the sea where the winds were as powerful as 60 kilometers per hour. Pura Vida Princess ignored the warning signs and took three lives away with them. When the captain made his distress call near the beach town of Punta Leona, everyone scurried for the life jackets, yet it was too late. A part of the ship toppled down and people were left trapped under the canopy. Truly terrifying. All passengers and crew survived through lifeboats and rafts except for three elderly people. Number 4. Ryu Unmara Ryu Unmara's owner had moored his fishing vessel in Honshu, Japan when one day it just magically appeared in the U.S. waters in 2012. It wasn't the most magical, but hey, the earthquake and tsunami had jolted the entire country, and that's when the vessel decided to have a little unmanned joyride and an entirely new ocean. The ship was already very shabby, partially broken, and seemed like a wreckage pulled out of the sea. 
For days, it sailed as a ghost ship until the Canadian authorities spotted Ryu Unmara. The owner thought that his ship had sank following the tsunami, but nope, the ship clearly had different plans. Alongside the Canadian Fishing Agency, the U.S. Coastal Guards tried to save whatever was left of the ship, and it wasn't much. There was no redemption for the vessel, and its fate wasn't different from what had been the expectations. The ship was scuttled to avoid any navigation disasters, and it was just a long way from home. Number 3. Rainbow Warrior Ah yes, remember the hysteric days when everyone was obsessed with testing their nuclear weapons? Can't say we miss it, but their legacy lives on. And what's a little bit of nuclear action without some fire? Before all the nations agreed upon an international law for the seas, let's say everyone was a bit of a free agent. Now, when the French government revealed its master plans for nuclear testing in their Polynesia, the nearby countries weren't having it. Nope, they had already declared this a nuclear-free zone and they wouldn't budge. On top of everything, environmental groups like Greenpeace were riled up against the French government. So, as a series of protests, their ship Rainbow Warrior left Auckland, New Zealand to show everyone they meant business. Until everything burst into flames. In the shocking turn of terrorist events, two French nationals had bombed the ship using limpet mines. On TV, the Paris government denied everything. You know the diplomatic gimmicks, they're everything but clear-cut. Yet soon enough, the smoke cleared, and the investigation revealed the involvement of the French intelligence in the operation. The ship sank, and France had a PR disaster of a lifetime. Number 2. Karg June of the year 2021 was on the horizon in most parts of the world, and while everyone slept soundly, Iran and Israel almost blasted off in a war. Alright, that didn't happen per se, but tensions were all-time high. After all, someone had burned Iran's biggest warship into the ground, or shall we say deepest sanctities of the ocean. Like every geopolitical naval incident, the incident starts in the Gulf of Oman. Karg was on its way for the routine Navy drill when the ship's major part was chipped into a blazing fire. In the pitch-black darkness of the night skies, only the raging fire on Karg was visible from miles, miles away. There were 400 people on board who stumbled on the sinking ship. Their Navy training came in handy, and they all jumped into the sea using life jackets. As the ship's leftover structure hovered on the sea, a part of it dipped. And near the port of Jask, the vessel fully submerged into the sea, finally putting off that horrendous fire. If you're curious about who did it, well, no one can be certain. The Iranian government was weirdly hush-hush about the situation and pointed some fingers towards Israel. All we know is that the Gulf of Oman is in a cursed timeline since 2019. You see, due to geopolitical tensions, commercial ships explode into fires like it's no one's business. Number 1. Al-Sami 6 A UAE-flagged cargo ship was on its way with cars to the Iraqi port of Umm Qasar when its journey was cut super short. The ship had only sailed 48 kilometers from the port of Asaluya in Iran when the country's onshore control travel heard several distressful calls of SOS. What really bothered the ship's smooth sailing were strong winds that the vessel couldn't endure. To add weight to the sinking ship, the waves were large enough to capsize a cargo vessel. And you know what happens next. The crew hurried to save their lives, and all of the life jackets and rafts were floating on the violent sea. In moments following the distress message, the captain of the ship was nowhere to be found. Iranian authorities were quick to respond, yet when the last reported status was not under the command for Al-Sami 6, the rescuers knew they were going to meet a sinking ship. And for once, their expectations didn't disappoint. Even then, they prompted the civilian ships to give a hand to survivors, and let's just say, people came through. All crewmen except one were saved but the ship settled on the seabed soon enough. Enjoyed the video? Give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, sailors.